Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss property dividend distribution. Now when we think of dividend, we always think of cash because when the company distribute dividend to the shareholders, they distribute cash because generally speaking, this is what investor would like to have cash because you can use the cash for anything. Well, sometime the company might distribute something other than cash. Simply put, the company can distribute anything they would like to inventory, a piece of land, property, anything, a vehicle. Usually when this happens in the real world, usually they will distribute stocks of other companies. But we don't have to worry what type of property we are dealing with. All we have to know is it's property other than cash, something other than cash. Now, what do we have to know about when we deal with property distribution? Well, what we have to know is, do we have a gain or a loss on this transaction? Does the company record a gain or a loss? What is the effect on the shareholder? How much is the amount of the dividend? Is it the basis? Is it the fair market value? How would the receiver, the shareholder, treat this distribution? Also, what's the effect on the corporation? What if this contribution has a liability or not? What if we have a gain? What if we have a loss? This is what we're going to be learning in this session. Property dividend distribution on both. How does it affect the shareholder? How does it affect the corporation? And how does it affect the accounts current and accumulated earnings and profit? Simply put, what's the effect on earnings and profit? Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. We're going to start by looking at the on the effect of the shareholder. Well, simply put, the amount received in property distribution equal to the fair market value of the property. So when they give you something, when they give you an asset, a stock, a bond, a piece of property, inventory, what is your amount? The amount that you receive is the fair market value of that property. Now, is that amount dividend or not? Well, we're going to go back to our basic rules. It's dividend to the extent of earnings and profit. If it's distributed from earnings and profit, it's dividend, which is taxable. If, if the company don't have earnings and profit and they did make the distribution, they're, they're going to tell you this is a return of capital, which is a tax free to the extent of your basis. And if you don't have any basis, well, any amount received in excess of the basis as capital gain, which is basically, that's the order that we learn about when it comes to dividend. So it doesn't matter whether that dividend is cash or something other than cash, we would still treat it the same way as if it's cash for the order of distribution. Now, we're going to reduce the amount distributed by the liability assumed by the shareholder. If the shareholder received this asset and with that asset, they received a liability, then we have to reduce the distribution. What does that mean? Let's assume we gave the shareholder an asset with a fair market value of 80000 Attached to this asset was a $20,000 liability. Well, the, the shareholder, the net the net of the shareholder is only 60000 So the net is 60000 because we gave them also a liability. So we gave them an asset worth eighty, but they really cannot own the asset unless they pay off the liability. Therefore, what they receive is sixty. Now, the basis for the property, listen to me carefully, the basis for the property for the shareholder is the fair market value. It's not affected by the liability. The distribution, the dividend for the shareholder is 60, but the basis for the shareholder is 80. Now, so the basis of the property, one more time, equal to the fair market value of the property as far as the shareholders are concerned. Basis equal to the fair market value. Let's take a look at the effect on the share on the corporation. Right? Well, the corporation will treat this distribution as if they sold the property. Well, if they sold the property for, for, for fair market value, when you sell it, you either have a gain or a loss. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to recognize the gain. You are not going to recognize the loss. So the corporation would recognize the gain in case they had a gain. Now, if the distributed property is subject to a liability and that liability is greater than the basis, 
Now, the fair market value, what we say is the fair market value is treated as not being less than the amount of the liability. Simply put, the liability becomes the fair market value. Let's, let me show you an example. Let's assume we're dealing with an asset that would have a fair market value of 80,000 and attached to it a liability of 95. Well, if the liability is 95, what we assume now, the fair market value is 95. What's the logic behind this? Well, if for one thing is, if somebody got received this asset, let's assume either the fair market value or the basis is 80. It doesn't matter, but the liability is 95. If someone, if you gave someone this asset, whatever that asset is, a building, and told them, or, or a warehouse, a small warehouse, and told them, look, this warehouse has a fair market value of 80,000. You'll be great. I'm going to give it to you as a dividend distribution. You'd say, okay, great. But look, with that warehouse comes a liability. I took out a loan against that warehouse and the loan is for 95,000 and you are assuming the loan. If you're assuming the, if you're taking the warehouse, the loan comes with it. It's attached because the mortgage are attached to the asset. Well, really what you gave me for me to own the asset, if you're giving me this asset, well, for me to own it, I have to pay off the loan. If I pay off the loan and own the property, that's the fair market value of the property. That, that's the definition of fair market value. It's what you pay. What I'm going to have to pay is 95. Therefore, is the li if the liability is an excess of the basis or the fair market value, it becomes really the fair market value. What is the effect of property dividend on earnings and profit? Remember this account, corporate earnings and profit? Well, if we have a gain, so if the company that does recognize a gain, which is they, they have to if there is a gain, increase earnings and profit for the access of fair market value over the basis. Now, you have to be careful on the CPA exam or on the exercise you are giving. Sometimes they tell you the earnings and profit is already reflecting the gain. Sometimes they don't. If they don't, it means you have to increase your earnings and profit. Now, you're going to have to reduce earnings and profit by the fair market value property distributed less liability on the property, or basis of greater. So if the basis are greater than the fair market value, it means we have a loss. What's going to happen is you're going to you're going to reduce the AMP by the fair market value. Okay. If the basis is greater, it means what you have is you have a loss. And also, if you have a, if you distributed the liability with that asset, you reduce your EMP by the amount of the liability. Now, bear in mind, distribution of whether it's cash or property cannot generate or add a deficit to earnings and profit. So when you distribute cash or property, you cannot make earnings and profit has a deficit. You, just, you, you simply stop at zero. Any access, once CEP and AEP are used, anything remaining is considered the return of capital than capital gains. We already know this. So deficit and earnings and profit can only arise through corporate losses. So you could have a deficit or more of a deficit when it's when you have taxable income, that's taxable loss, plus or minus the adjustments gives you a loss, then that's this will give a rise to a deficit, negative EMP. But distribution don't don't give you negative EMP. It's just basically CEP and EEP, they don't go negative from distribution. They don't go negative from distribution. Let's look at an example. Starting with the loss example, Blue Enterprises own 10% in Emerland Industries. Emerland has sufficient earning and profit to cover any distribution made. So they have plenty of this, uh, plenty of AEP and CEP. They distributed to Blue Enterprise a vacant property with an adjusted basis of 70 and a fair market value of 40. So this is what Emerland did. They distributed this property. So what about what's 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 unusual about this property? It's a loss, a loss of 30,000. So they distributed a land and they have a loss on that land. So Blue, okay, Blue, the, the company that's receiving this, this, this piece of land, they have a taxable dividend of 40,000. Why? Because it's the fair market value of the land. The fair market value of the land is 40,000. And their basis in the land is 40,000. You have a taxable dividend of 40000 and the basis on the land of 40000 Now, obviously, if they're a corporation, they have a dividend received deduction, but that's a different story. The company that distributed Emerald, they cannot deduct the loss of 30000 So what should have they done? 
if they cannot deduct the loss. If I was in there, if, it, if they're asking me for an advice, I would say, sell the property to a third party, recognize the loss of 30,000, then give the cash to Blue Enterprises. Well, Blue Enterprises would still have a basis of 40,000. Either way, you gave them 40,000. They have taxable amount of 40,000, whether you gave them the property or you gave them the cash. But what you did, if you sold the property, you recognize the loss. And that's the trick here. Now, assume in the previous example that the land is subject to a liability of 75,000. If the land is subject to a liability of 75,000, it means that's the fair market value minus the basis. Then you have a gain of 5,000. Okay. Blue Corporation here has no dividend. Blue, when they receive this, when they receive this asset, they have no dividend. Why? Under those circumstances, the debt is greater than the fair market value. The debt is greater than 40000 The debt is greater than the cost basis. Basically, what you did is you gave them debt. That's what you basically gave them. You gave them, you're responsible for $75,000. If you want to own this property, pay the bank $75,000. The basis in the land is $75,000. To own the land free and clear, pay off the debt. Well, you didn't really give me anything. All you did is you gave me an obligation. I have no dividend, but I have a property with a basis of 75, assuming, you know, once I pay it, I have to pay 75,000 to the bank. Let's take a look at another example. Ruby Incorporated distributed an asset with a basis of 15, fair market value of 25 to me, its shareholder. Now we have a gain because 25,000 is an excess of the basis. Ruby's EMP are raised by 10,000 by the gain because we sold this, in quote, we sold it since we distributed the asset, we have a gain. So we increase EMP by $10,000 of the gain, then reduce EMP by the distribution, by the fair market value. Therefore, the net decrease on, EM, on EMP is 15,000 because we increased it by the gain, reduced it by the fair market value of dividend distributed. As far as Mia is concerned, she received a dividend of 25,000, again, assuming EMP exists which is, if that's the case, that's dividend to Mia because that's coming from EMP. Now we're going to change the scenario a little bit. Let's assume the basis is 30,000 for Ruby. Remember, so what we're doing here is we are changing the scenario. We're assuming the basis is 30,000. If the basis is 30,000, this asset will have a loss of 5,000 and Ruby cannot recognize the loss. Why? Because it cannot. Its losses are not recognized. But what's going to happen is we're going to reduce EMP by 30,000 because we have to reduce earnings and profit by, by 30,000. Mia would report dividend of the fair market value of 25,000. Why? Because this is how much she received in dividend. She doesn't care what the basis are. She received a fair market value of 25, therefore it's 25. Let's change the scenario a little bit again. Assume a liability of 6,000 is assumed by Mia. So with this asset comes a liability of 6,000. And we're assuming the basis is 30. Well, we're going to reduce EMP by 30 minus 6. We're going to reduce EMP by 24. We means Ruby Incorporated. And Mia will have a dividend of 25 minus 6, which will equal to 19. That's her dividend. What is Mia's basis? Mia's basis is still the fair market value of 25,000. But her dividend now, notice her dividend is 19. The basis is 25,000. Let's take a look at another example. Property is distributed. The corporate basis is 25, and we have three different scenarios. And assume CAP and uh, current and CAP are both 150 for each. It means we have plenty of, plenty of AEP and CEP to absorb the dividend, which is only... Uh, it's going to be 60, 10, and 40, which you have plenty to absorb. So under the first scenario, we have a fair market value of the property is 60. The basis is 25. We have no liability involved. Well, 60 minus 25 equal to a gain of 35. That's recognized. And once the gain is recognized, we increase e EMP, but then we reduce EMP by the fair market value of asset distributed. Scenario two, we we distributed the property with a fair market value of 10, basis of 25, we have a loss of 15. We have a loss of 15. Well, here's what's gonna happen. We have no liability, no gain to be recognized, no increase in 
no increase in asset, no increase in the EMP because we have a loss. What about EMP decrease? We have a decrease by the basis of 25,000. Let's look at scenario three. The fair market value is 40. The basis is 25. Well, we have a liability of 15 as well. What about the gain? The gain is 40 minus 25, 15. This is how we come up with the gain. Now, what is the effect on EMP? Well, since we have a gain, it's going to increase. It's going to increase EMP. But also what's going to happen is this. Since we distributed an asset with a $40,000 fair market value, but since we gave a liability with it, then we're going to reduce this by 15, and that's going to be 25. We're going to reduce EMP by 25. By 25. Now, obviously, you can net those if, you, if you'd like to net them, but this is what we are doing here. Uh, what should you do now? You should go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs, true, false, exercises. That's going to help you understand property dividend. Property dividend is an important concept. It tes it's tested on the CPA exam. Especially they try to trick you with the earnings and profit account. How does it affect earnings and profit? You need to know the rules when it comes to shareholders, corporation, and its effect on EMP. Good luck. Study hard. Invest in yourself, whether you are a CPA exam candidate, enrolled agent, or an accounting student. Good luck.